Hi, my name is Deb Tucker from Studio 180 Design and today I'm going to talk to you about one of our technique sheets and a specialized unit that we call Little Houses. If you see a block like this or you're designing something like this, this is what I identify as a little house. It's a square that has two folded corners on the edges. Now, when you are following a pattern or when you're designing, your first thought is to simply cut that square exactly the size that it needs to be in your block, cut these half the size, so let's talk a little bit of numbers here. If we were going to put this in that block that you just saw, that square would normally be cut four and a half inches, the squares here would be cut two and a half inches, you would simply put the squares on top, fold them back and forth and put them into the corners. If you cut your pieces to exactly the right size, the problem is every part of your operation, your cutting, your stitching, and your pressing has to be absolutely perfect or your unit doesn't end up being square and perfectly sized at the end. By simply upsizing the size of the big square that you use for the back and upsizing the squares that you use for those corners a quarter of an inch. That quarter of an inch is, is going to give you wiggle room to maybe not be so perfect and be able to work through. My Tucker Trimmer 2 tool is designed to trim down squares and to trim down units that deal with the quarter inch and the three quarter inch size. So when I need to cut that purple square at four and three quarters, I would pull out my Tucker Trimmer 2. When I go to cut those smaller squares a quarter of an inch bigger to two and three quarters, again, I would pull out my Tucker Trimmer 2. But once, we've pulled, once you've cut those squares a little bigger, I think most of you are pretty familiar with the process. You take those squares, align them in the corner, mark your solid line, stitch on your solid line, fold it back into the corner. Then take your other square, position it in the corner, stitch on the line, and fold it right back into the corner. It seems like a simple thing to do. But frequently what happens when you do that technique is that your stitching gets off, your placement gets off, and when you fold it back into the corner, your edges do not line up. You ha don't have enough fabric folding back into the corner, so your piece is technically shy. Or what may happen is you've got too much fabric. And that may seem simple enough, but that usually adjusts your, changes your quarter of an inch seam at the top of your piece. If you've got too much fabric folded back out there, usually you're shy somewhere else. But I don't worry about that because I've cut my pieces a little bigger than they need to be so that I can trim them down. That's when I pull in this tool. My square squared tool is designed to do a square inside of another square, making it bigger and trimming it down. Since I've made this bigger, how I would place my square square tool on there is like this. This is going to be a four inch unit, so the lines that I'm looking at are these X's here. Now normally if I were doing the full square and had four corners on here, I would line up all four X's. But here I'm only lining up the X at the top of the seam. I'm lining up the diagonal guidelines here, and this is the one that was too big on the side. But I'm not worried, it's not quite even at the edge. I'm not worried because now what I'm going to be able to do is clean up those two corners, pick up the tool, and simply rotate the unit 180 degrees. Let's get rid of that there. And when I reposition this, I'm going to do the same thing that I do when I trim down a square with all four corners. Put my four, focus on my four at the other end, line up my four and a half inch increment here my four and a half inch line here so that I know when I am done this unit is now exactly the size that it needs to be. All of the seams are perfectly aligned. I do still have a little bit of extra fabric underneath there. I would go back and trim that away so that I don't have any extra fabric built into my quilt, but what I've got now is a perfectly sized unit that I'm going to be able to put into a quilt project have a precision piece and easy construction. So when you need to make little houses, head to your local quilt shop, pick up one of our square squared tools, pick up one of our Tucker Trimmer 2 tools, and if you can't find them at your local quilt shop, check out our website. 
When you get these tools, you're going to be ready to make your own village of little houses.